every great salesperson I've ever met has this epiphany sometime in their career where they realize if they just help the customer get what they're going for, you know, what their goal is, they'll, they'll sell as much as they could possibly hope for. Hello and welcome back to the Talking Sales series. I have James Muir with me again. Good day, James. Hey, John. Thanks for having me back on. Hey, I, I've heard you talk about mindset and the importance of mindset in sales, and, and you and I agree on this matter. But tell me what you mean about mindset and why it, you actually say it's more important the right mindset than the right technique. Explain. That is right. That is right. I, I'm famous for saying intent matters more than technique does. And, and the reason for that is a, a couple of interesting things happen when, when people first meet each other, right? Like literally, and there's just the first couple of seconds that people meet each other. The first thing that they do is they, they judge warmth or they judge intent of that person. They say, is this person trying to help me? Is this person trying to hurt me? Right? That's what, they're, that's what they figure out. And then after they've determined that, then they determine what's called competency. And competency is, is this person able to do whatever it is they intend, right? Can this person help me or can this person hurt me, right? And, and those two things, and, and the interesting thing and a, a common mistake that salespeople make is they play very heavily into competency. They think if I just prove that my solution is the best solution, I will win, right? That's what they think. But I'm telling you guys, the social science is in, it's not hard to go find. And what, what that science tell, tells us is that um, decisions about intent and warmth are primary meaning they happen first and they carry more weight, which means that your intention matters more than your ability to solve the problem. Okay. And that may be tough medicine, but I'm telling you a lot of salespeople, Hey, I'm, I'm, we're the, our solution is the best. It's the best. It's the best. Like compare me to whoever you want. I'm the best. If they don't trust you, if they don't think that you have their best intentions at mind, in most cases, the, the deal is off. A friend of mine, Keen McLaughlin, who does win loss reviews, uh, he's learned a lot through those and, and he, he totally agrees with this. So he, he is saying that the product you've got gets you on the dance floor, the product and price and that sort of package. Uh, but it's not what gets you the business. And what gets you the business is, is being there for the other person, being humble, being, being you know, slightly introverted on extroverted, introverted slide, being really curious and then being there, particularly in the early meetings of, of, of any uh, sales process or buying journey, being there totally for the client. Therefore, you know, the first meeting you have, and, and, if, and, and if, if you have a number of discovery meetings, none of those meetings you are discussing yourself, your product or anything else. It's all about the client. Exactly right. That? A hundred percent. I agree with that. That is, uh, that is some great wisdom that you just dispensed right there. And here, here's the interesting thing. When you, when you actually kind of dive deep into this science, what you'll find is that we, we actually um, quietly transmit our intentions all the time, right? Whether you realize it or not. And there's kind of three ways that that happens. There's something called mirror neurons, which uh, the, the short definition is we have neurons that when we see another person or another, um, like, like when you go to a movie and someone, you know, something bad happens in the movie and you feel sad, that's what's triggering your mirror neurons, right? Is you can't, there's an element of sympathy that these mirror neurons see with another person. Then there's something called micro expressions. These are one to 1 25th of a second facial tics, the little, little expressions. Most people can't pick up on them. You have to slow them way down on film in order to be able to pick what these things do. But um, in, in real life, people just call it a feeling that they get about a person. But what they're really reading is they're reading these very small facial expressions that are on people. And the last is paralanguage, which, you know, is when it's like when your spouse tells you, you know, you ask her how she is and she says, fine. But you can tell by the way that they said fine. They're definitely not fine. Right. So the, these three things um, all taken together, they're always transmitting. And, and what the data shows is that even uh, infants that are that are six months old or so can actually pick up on these things before they can even speak. They can pick up on the intentions of another person. And when you share this with salespeople, they go bananas because they'll say, well, James, how can I how am I able to you know, convey the right intent then? And the answer is you can't. The only way to ha to show good intent, right, to transmit the right messages, is to actually have good intent. You and can't, you can't act. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. You yeah. can't fake it. And and so um, th the thing you got to do is what you were just saying that Kian said, which is you need to get off of yourself, get off of the product, be a hundred percent genuine and present with the customer, and think I'm going to help this person however I can possibly help. You'll be sending all the right signals if you do that. But when you go in, I'll tell you a funny story, John. I had a, one of my reps, uh, a customer called me and, he, um, and this customer says, 
don't ever send that guy back here again. He has commission breath. Okay. Yep. Commission breath. And that was the first time I'd ever heard that. And he got, and that just captures exactly what we're trying to avoid here is my guy was over there with his handout trying to get money from this customer. And that customer picked up on it that my, my sales guy didn't, you know, he didn't care about the customer at all. He was just trying to get some money out of them. And that, so that, it, that's the, that's the, the silent body language we're trying to avoid. I work with teams that are trying to get this mindset right and getting the culture right in the way they sell. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it disappoints me so often when I uh, either get somebody to tape the call they've been on if it's a Zoom call or uh, I guess occasionally go with some of my clients' uh, salespeople into a call just to help them and, and coach them through it. And so often I get, you know, yes, I'm going, going to go through a discovery. Yes, it's about them. I've got the right mindset. And the customer says something as we go through the discovery and ask questions that, oh, yes, we do have a problem that that problem's really a, a tough one for us. And, you know, we're trying to nut it through. And immediate reaction of the salesperson, ah, let me tell you how our They process- jump on it. Yeah, it's uncontrollable. Oh. They can't help themselves. <laughs> they totally destroy the trust. They totally, it's all wrong at that time in, in, in the sales process. The customer will bait you all the time on that too. And you just have to have enough willpower to not do it. And so my advice, here's what, there's another thing that's very similar to this problem that, that you can solve with the same action. And that is, I don't know if you know, when, when salespeople ask a question, do you know how long they wait before they actually ask a second question or actually try to answer it for the customer? No. It's about a second. It's about a second. And so what you want to do is uh, you need to wait. And so the way, the best way to do that is have notes, take notes. So after, after you ask your question, right? Or if, if they ask the question, just take notes, quietly take notes. Don't jump on it and say, hey, I can solve this problem or whatever. Just take notes. And what will happen is the customer will actually start giving you more and more information because of the gap, in the silence, right? And, uh, and so then after you acknowledge that, you can ask, a, um, they acknowledge it and they say something, you got to wait another two to four seconds. And what will happen is they'll give you even more. And I know you, I know you what I'm talking about, because if you do this in a group, yeah. what will happen is suddenly other people in the group will start weighing in on this exact same question. You'll get literally 10 times more information that you would have got if you would just jumped to your next question, right? And, and the secret to this and to not pouncing on it when they say, I got this problem, is just take notes, keep your head down, right? And that's how you fill the gap is you're just taking notes. And then those people will start pouring out more and more information. And that tells us what the bullseye is and how to really affect change that's needed for the customer. And once you've done that, you've, you've essentially won the deal. I mean, here's, this is my opinion, John, in a complex sale, there's really usually one or two really big issues that carry almost all of the weight. There'll be a million other things that they want, but there's only two things probably that carry most of the weight. And if you get those two, right, if you actually understand what the bullseye is and you hit those, your, your, your sale is mostly sold. And what are they? The, no, I'm, it, uh, it's different for every customer. Oh, you right? find those. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Once you find out what those two things are, but you'll never find out if you don't listen. Yeah. Right. And that's the, that's why we got to shut up, not stop selling and start listening. Uh, the, shutting up is absolutely critical. And I agree with you that the, the other thing I'd do is, uh, is suggest to people and it works very, very well is shut up listen, but make sure the next word you use is one of those why, where, how, an open, an open-ended word that starts your next question. Uh, because if you say anything else other than that, uh, you're likely to move into sales mode and product mode and so on and so forth. Good so advice. One of those Good words advice. you can't, essentially. Yep. Good advice. Um, okay, mindset. Uh, you and I are on the same table here and we really need to, uh, to get everybody in sales from the day they're born into sales, focused on the customer, there to help the customer. And I keep reminding everybody where the word sell come on, comes from. Have you, have you heard that, James? Sure. I, but I think we can all hear it again. Yeah. It comes from an old English word, salan, and it means to give. And to me, sales is all about giving. It's all about helping. It's all about taking, t- helping the customer through to achieve an outcome that's valuable for them. Uh, and, and your product's just an enabler. You'll talk about uh, late in the process, how that will enable that to happen. Uh, and yeah, so exactly. I, I think every great salesperson I've ever met has this epiphany sometime in their career where they realize if they just help the customer get what they're going for, you know, what their goal is, they'll, they'll sell as much as they could possibly hope for. 
And so, but, but not every, it, not everybody can get that light bulb turned on as easy as we just said it, right? It's like, there's a, like a, this epiphany where they really get it that, hey, I'm just going to try to help this person, right? I'm going to give. And if I do that, guys, you'll have more sales than you can possibly handle. This episode of Talking Sales is sponsored by the authors of the new page-turning sales novel, The Wentworth Prospect. In the words of one reviewer, it's B2B sales mastery delivered in an ingenious, engaging, and hugely entertaining way. Get it now at your favorite book retailer.